One of the new features I saw recently come in with my Office 365 subscription, and one of my favorite new things that they've given us is something called the tree map chart. I find that it does a really nice job of representing something that has categories and subcategories. As an example, if I have just an absolute data dump here of properties that my company has been responsible for selling, of course, this data is very important to me, but ultimately it's not very useful until I get some sort of report, some sort of summary on it to let me know where the most important things are in my work. What's taking up most of our time, what's responsible for most of our revenue, etc. And so one thing that we can do here is, as you can see, if I have different property types being residential and commercial, and then property subtypes within that, and then I have ultimately the sale prices of each of these properties, I should be able to generate a chart that shows me how much commercial versus residential does for us, and how much each of the different residential subtypes does for us, and how much each of the different commercial subtypes does for us. And this will ultimately turn out looking like this. As you can see here, commercial, the green area on the left, is significantly larger than the residential blue area on the right. And then within commercial, we have a very significant amount of our commercial properties being multi-tenant, and then a smaller subset being single-tenant, etc. So this tree map chart is very nice for representing things as how they pertain to our overall revenue. You can see here that single tenant commercial properties are actually more important to me than all of my residential work. And so maybe I think to myself, I need to put more time into something that's successful or more time into something that's not successful yet. This allows me to start making decisions. However, to make this happen, I need to make a set of data that very clearly points out that there are commercial versus residential properties and that there are multi-tenant versus single-tenant properties. In yesterday's video, I did this with a pivot table. In today's video, I'm going to use it with the sum ifs function. So let's start off with how am I going to make a table that represents how much of our sales were residential and commercial and then within that, how much of those were single tenant versus multi-tenant. The way we solve this problem is by scrolling over here to the right side of the screen and creating a small table here that says commercial and residential, and then beside that, one that says land, etc. So the way we're going to make that happen is I'm going to simply highlight from cell D4 across to cell E4, holding down my shift key and using the right arrow, and then using the keyboard shortcut control shift down arrow, selecting the entirety of these two columns simultaneously. So now I can use control C to copy and scroll over to the right and paste these two columns. Now what I'm looking for is for Excel to trim out all of the things that are duplicates here. So I'm going to go up to my data tab at the top of the screen, choose the remove duplicates feature on these two columns, and I'm going to say, please go ahead. Oh, notice here there's a little checkbox for my data has headers. So I mark that checkbox. Yes, it does have headers. Now I want to make sure that both of these two columns are exact matches on either side, meaning that in this particular instance, you can see that there are land property subtypes under residential as well as commercial. I don't want to remove the commercial land just because the residential land is there. So I need it to be exact duplicates. So I leave both of these two checkboxes checked to make sure that when it finds a duplicate value, it checks in both of the columns at the same time. I hit OK, and sure enough, it creates simply six unique values here. Residential land, commercial multi-tenant, commercial single tenant, residential multifamily, commercial land. You can see that commercial land and residential land both exist in this little table here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in total sales as a new column immediately next to this. 
And the function I'm looking for is a function that will add up the entire column for sales price and compare residential against the property type and land against the property subtype. I find that on the formulas tab at the top of my screen under math and trig with the function called sum ifs. Sum ifs is an adding function, of course, from the sum part of it. But in the ifs part of it, we have a logical function that tests criteria. So with ifs, it's a multiple if. As you can see right above it is sum if with one criteria. Sum ifs with multiple criteria means first go to the property type column and check out whether it's residential, and then go over to the property subtype column and check out whether it's land. And if it's both of those two things, add it to the running total over on the right. So I choose some ifs here. I put in what I want to add up. I want to add up the entirety of the sale price column. So I'm going to click on cell L5 here, use control shift down arrow to highlight down to L5 through L927 to get all those properties. Now it's very important at this point that I recognize I'm about to, let me scroll up here so you can see it, I'm about to autofill this down for other entries here, which means that this reference absolutely needs to be locked down as an absolute reference. I tap the F4 key on the keyboard and it puts in dollar sign L dollar sign five through dollar sign L dollar sign 927. Now, what is the criteria and the criteria range? The first criteria range is all the different cells that could say residential in them. So I'm going to scroll over here and highlight from cell D5. As you can see, this is exactly matching up with where the sum range is. If you accidentally go to cell L5 for the sum range, but cell D4 for the criteria range, this is going to break down and you're going to get error messages. So I go to cell D5 in the same way that for the sum range, I went to cell L5. I use control shift down arrow to go through 927, just like I did in the sum range. And I press the F4 key on the keyboard, just like I did in the previous example to lock that down. And the criteria that I'm comparing it against, criteria one, is whether it's residential. Now, specifically here, when I go to cell 05, I am not locking this down by pressing the F4 key on my keyboard. And that's because as I autofill the total sales column down, I would like it to move from residential to commercial, then to commercial, then to residential, etc. And so I actually don't need this to be an absolute reference. Now I repeat this exact same process for criteria range two, which is for the subtypes. For criteria range two, I highlight cell E5 and use control shift down arrow to highlight through cell E927. Once again, the heights of these, the locations of these have to match up from L5 through L927 to D5 through D927 to E5 through E927. Each of these has to match up perfectly for us. And again, tap the F4 key on the keyboard to lock that down. And for criteria two, I click on to cell P5. Once again, just like O5, this is not an absolute reference, it is a relative reference. When I hit OK, you can see here that it gives me my result. I can autofill this down, stretch it out a little bit, and of course go to the Home tab and format this as a currency value. Now that I have this table that goes over to my larger set of data, says how much land did we sell that was residential and how much land did we sell that was commercial, and it compiles all of that for us. And now that it says residential, land, and the number value right in a row like this, it's actually incredibly easy to make a tree map chart from this. I click directly on the data, use the insert tab at the top of the screen, and use the tree map drop down menu. As you can see here, simply selecting the tree map option allows you to create a new tree map. Notice that if it's not sorted appropriately, it won't keep those together. So I'll go over here now to column O, the property type column, and just use my sort A to Z, or Z to A, whatever the case may be, to rearrange those things for me.
And that's it. I can now clearly see how much more important to me commercial properties are than residential, and ultimately how much more important to me multi-tenant properties are than uh, the entirety of residential properties. And of course, I can format this more specifically and get more detail out of it, but even just this visualization gives me a lot to work from.